everyone this morning to this anointing service in our month of purpose and vision for supernatural shift. This morning, our subject is understanding purpose. And the text is, first one is Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and in verse 1. He said, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 he said, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. This morning we have two objectives. First is to understand purpose, understanding purpose. And second, to understand the profit of understanding purpose. Scriptures make many things clear and I want to itemize them one by one. One, that God is the God of time and purpose. To everything there is a time and a season to every purpose under heaven is a God to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. God is a God of time and purpose. The meaning is that he has a purpose for what he does and a time for the purpose. He has a purpose for what he does and he has a time for what he proposed. So he's a God of purpose. Second is connected to the first. That God is deliberate, intentional, calculated, and premeditated. In all he does. God is deliberate. Intentional. Calculated. And premeditated. In all that he does. That includes you. Creating you. He was deliberate. Intentional. Calculated. Premeditated. In everything he does. And that leads to the point number three. That God is never flippant, superficial, shallow, or thoughtless in what he does. God is never flippant, never superficial, never shallow. He's never thoughtless in what he does. We don't serve an absent-minded God. He's not flippant. He's not superficial. He's not shallow. He's not thoughtless in what he does. So he's a God of purpose. So there is a purpose for your existence. He's the God who is deliberate and intentional and calculated. So he calculated your existence before you came here. It's not superficial, it's not shallow, it's not thoughtless. So he was not creating you absent-mindedly. Let me add this, that God is the God who purposes his acts and acts his purposes. He purposes his acts and acts his purposes.
before he acts anything he purposes. And what he purposes, he acts. He purposes his acts and acts his purposes. Isaiah chapter 46 and in 9 to 10. He said, remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. I don't just start things. I declare, I decided before I begin. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Somebody say, Amen. Acts chapter 15, verse 18. It says, Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world, before the world began. He knew what to do. So seated here this morning, you are not an accident. Seated here this morning, it is not because of what your mother and father did that gave, birth, that gave rise to you. God had a purpose for you and when the time for you came, he brought you forth. God calculated you. He was deliberate. He was intentional. He planned everything including the family you should be born through. Including the tribe you should be. For a purpose. And you are, it didn't come because God was absent minded. Maybe you were born before he realized why. Oh, Which one? Why was this one born? No. Having said that, we are going forward. See, this month, something will explode in your life. Every lie of the devil he has told to you concerning your life, that lie will be canceled this month. Shout the loudest, amen. The question is, what is purpose? What is God's purpose for a person's life? Number one, I have six of them. I will explain in service and then mention the others and then explain them in further services. Number one, your purpose is the necessity that influenced your creation by God. The necessity that influenced your creation by God. You know it is said that necessity is the mother of invention. That something was needed, so it was invented. The necessity that influenced your creation by God is called your purpose. The meaning is you were, need, you were created because you were needed. You are not on earth because of increase of population. You were created because you were needed. So your purpose is the need that influence your creation or election by God. The need you were brought to meet. Your purpose is the reason for you in the world. The reason for you. You know, 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 1 to 2 gives us a little picture of what I'm talking about. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among the sons. And Samuel said, how can I go now? We'll stop there. That is, there was a need. There was the need for a king. And the king that was in place had failed. And I'm sure God knew this ahead of time. And therefore he said, 
I will create somebody who will take this place because that man is going to fail. That was the need. David, the need for David was the vacancy for a king in Israel. And God said, I found a man after my own heart. So let it be clear to you that there is a necessity that influences your creation. There is a need you are on earth to fulfill or in your family to fulfill or in your community or in your nation. There is that need. That is your purpose. Number two, your purpose is the desire or pleasure you were created to fulfill for the creator. The desire or pleasure you were created to fulfill for the creator. There is a desire or intention in the heart of the creator that moved him to design and create you. There is a desire. There, there, is a, there was a, a desire, an intention in the heart of the creator that moved him to design and create you. And I, I use the word design because design is the reason for potentials, the things he wired inside you. There is a, 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 there is a desire or, or, or pleasure you were created. In fact, designed and created to fulfill for your creator. That is your purpose. That desire, that intention in the heart of the creator moved him to design and create you. He picked up a man, a young man, and he said, I will wire into him certain capabilities to make him preach for me with passion and to make him dance for me easily and to make me make him give me songs that I like and he wired several things is God still speaking to somebody here your purpose is the pleasure your life was designed to bring to your creator the pleasure your life was designed or designed to bring to your creator you know, Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. He said, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things. And for thy pleasure they were, they are, and created. That pleasure, that pleasure, that pleasure you were designed. Somebody say amen. Question is, what do you do? How do you live in order to make your maker happy? That is your purpose. What do you do? How do you live in order to bring pleasure to your creator? That is your purpose. Close the working of your hands, include your assignment with him. That's your purpose. When he sees the fish inside the water, Doing the gymnastics in the water, it brings him pleasure. When he sees the eagle glide in the air and do all the acrobatics in the air, he's excited. He wired them to be in that realm. What do you do? How do you live to bring pleasure to your creator? That is your purpose. Is God speaking to anybody at all? Can I go on ahead? Number three, your purpose is the assignment, mission, or duty you were created to fulfill. The assignment, mission, or duty you were created to fulfill. There is an assignment in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of man. There is a mission, there is a duty you were created to fulfill. It's called purpose. He told Jeremiah, before I formed you, I knew you. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. I will look at that in the next service. Your purpose is the assignment, the mission, the duty you were created to fulfill. Number 
are for. Your purpose is the worth, benefit, and value of your existence. The worth, the benefit, the value of your existence to both divinity and humanity. The worth, the value, the benefit of your existence. What is the worth? What is the value? What is the worth? What is the benefit? What is the value of your existence? To both divinity and humanity, it is called your purpose. You are not worthless. You have a worth. Now look at that in the conservice. Fifth, your purpose is the sum total of the mark and impact you have been placed on the earth to make. Is the sum total of the mark and the impact you have been placed on the earth to make. That mark, that impact you have been placed on the earth to make. That is called your purpose. We we'll look at that in the other service. The sum total of it. Finally, your purpose is the outcome or end product you are in existence to achieve. The outcome or end product you are in existence to achieve. When Paul the Apostle said, I am ready to be offered, the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight and so on. He says, I ended well. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. We'll look at that in the last service. The outcome, the end product you are in existence to achieve. Somebody say amen. What is the profit of understanding purpose? If we have said, maybe we'll go through it again, that your purpose is the necessity that influenced your creation by God. It's the desire or pleasure you were designed and created to fulfill for the creator. That it is the assignment, mission, or duty you are created to fulfill. And that your purpose is the worth, the benefit and value of your existence to both divinity and humanity. And then your purpose is the sum total of the mark and impact you have been placed on the earth to make. And then your purpose is the outcome or end product your existence to achieve. Having said all of that, what is the benefit of understanding purpose? Number one, understanding purpose delivers people from the feeling of hopelessness, worthlessness, and uselessness. It delivers people from the feeling of hopelessness, worthlessness, and uselessness in life that feeling that people have that makes oh i'm just i'm just useless i'm just a mistake on it it delivers people when you know that you are created for a purpose and you decide to pursue that purpose for your life you no longer feel like you are an accident of creation you no longer feel like you are an accident of creation. You don't feel like you are the product of a cosmic accident. You, you no longer feel like you are a mistake in life. There are people who feel, am I a mistake? Is God really aware of me? Did God really plan for me to live? Does he really have a plan? It is a deep understanding that you, 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 ha you have a purpose on the earth. And that God does not make mistakes. And he created you for a purpose that delivers you from that spell. Psalm 42 verse 5. The psalmist said, why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you disquieted in me, hoping God? 
for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. I, I, I don't want to be cast down. I was created to praise, so I will praise. I refuse to be cast down. Job 14, 14. If a man lives, if a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes. I, I know change is coming. I can't die now. I can't die now. What God showed me about my life has not finished. I can't die right now. I, I can't die now. I can't end here now. And because I know where I am going, I will wait until my change comes. I refuse to be hopeless. I refuse to be worthless. I refuse to feel useless. And everybody with such a plague here today, I declare it broken in the name of Jesus. Lift your right and say, I am not worthless. I am not useless. I am not aimless. I am alive for a purpose. And that purpose shall come to pass. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. What is the profit of understanding purpose? Number two. Understanding purpose delivers people from the tragedy of wasted living. The tragedy of wasted living. Or the tragedy of the wasted life. It delivers people from the tragedy of living at random. Living by trial and error. Living life to chance. There are people who live at random. Whatever comes to their hand, they do. They're just living at, living at random. Living life to chance. When purpose is not known, people live like that. In Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18, the Bible said, Where there is no vision, the people perish. One translation said the people dwell carelessly. They run wild. They run wild. They run wide, they are without order. Understanding purpose is what delivers you from the tragedy of the wasted life. Number three, and I'll look at all this now in the subsequent services. Understanding purpose helps to direct life's energy, time, and resources to what really matters to life. Understanding purpose helps to direct life's energy, time, and resources to what really matters to life. You direct your, your, your energy. You direct your time. You direct your resources to what really matters to life. I'll look at this in the next service. Number four, understanding purpose delivers people from wrong companionships and relationships. When you know what your purpose is, everybody can't be a friend. Not that you hate them. Everybody can't be accommodated in your space in terms of closeness of relationship. It delivers people from wrong companionships and relationships. Proverbs 13, 20 talked about he who walks with the wise shall be wise, but the companion of fools shall be destroyed. Number five, are, are you ready? Understanding purpose delivers people from the plague of imitation and competition. The plague of imitation and competition. Where you know that you are on earth for a specific assignment and everybody's assignment may not be your assignment. There are people who can never be themselves because in the first place they don't know who, what they are meant to be. Oh, 
Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12. It said they comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. It delivers from the plague of imitation and competition. Number six. Understanding purpose fuels pursuit and persistence in life. It fuels pursuit and persistence in life. This is what you are sentenced to doing with your life. It is either you succeed or you succeed. <laughs> it is either I succeed or I succeed. He said it fuels persistence. It fuels pursuit and persistence in life. In Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 to 3, you see how he, he runs. Once he has a vision or a purpose, he runs. This is very, very important. The meaning is for the lack of understanding of purpose, people feel worthless and hopeless. They feel like their lives are a mistake for the lack of understanding of purpose. People end up wasting their lives, time, and energy in wrong pursuits for the lack of understanding of purpose. People mix and mingle with those that have no business with their lives for the lack of understanding of purpose. People are struggling how they can be like others, dress like others, just struggle, just struggle. For the lack of understanding of purpose, people can't last on any pursuit. They don't last in any pursuit. They just drop one thing, move to another, drop one thing, move to another. Because they don't really know where they should pour their life's energy. This is my counsel and conclusion this morning. One, determine to understand God's purpose for your creation. To avoid the tragedy of the wasted life. Determine to understand God's purpose for your life. And if I will plead with you the whole of the month of, of this month, midweek service, Sunday service, will be dealing heavily with the matter of purpose and vision so that you can have a clear understanding, a clear picture of what you are meant to do with your life and not waste it. Determined to understand God's purpose for your creation. To avoid the tragedy of the wasted life. Number two. Knowing that your most important purpose in life is spiritual and eternal. That your most important purpose in life is spiritual and eternal. You must determine to live in a way that will make the most spiritual impact in time and in eternity. Again, knowing that your most important purpose in life is spiritual and eternal, you must determine to live in a way that will make the most spiritual impact for time and eternity. Dust will return back to the dust. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7. And the spirit will return back to God who gave it. As we know that our most important purpose is spiritual and it's eternal. We must determine to live in a way that will make the most spiritual impact for time and for eternity. Determine to live for God. Determine to live for the interest of the kingdom. In every facet of your life and endeavor. Where you work in the office, live for God. Live for eternity. In your relationships and associations, live for God. Because nobody to count the number of cars you have when you go to heaven. And the quality of dress you wore will not matter at that time. It is what investments we made in time that is entryable into eternity that will matter. Let's set our priorities right. Our most important purpose in life is spiritual and it is eternal. And I believe it's a new day for somebody. 
Has God spoken to anybody here today? Who is the one here who believes you are not going to waste your life? You are not going to waste your time? You are not going to waste your existence? Stand up on your feet with a loud shout of praise. You believe you are not going to waste your life. You are not going to waste your time. You are not going to waste your existence. You are going to live for that which really matters. Lift up your hands and give the Lord the praise. Give the Lord the praise.